Whoa. Hers is all crooked. First step to removing the honey supers is to add a bee escape. This is a bee escape with a one-way gate. This is actually an inner cover. And this is the bee escape that I made. But we're gonna use both of these. We have five hives to get honey from, but we're gonna start with two. Okay, so in addition to putting the bee escapes on, the missus seems to think there's a lot of drones coming in and out, so we're gonna check that as well. So we use tie down straps to keep the lids of these hives on. When we first started, we used rocks, but as I'm getting older, the rocks are heavy. So straps work better. So as you can see, some of the straps are ratchet straps and we've converted over to lashing straps because, well, these tie down straps, these ratchet straps, they're kind of a pain to undo and do back up. Give them a few puffs of smoke in the front entrance. Gently remove the cover. Remember, they don't like the loud sounds of the cracking of the propolis or propolis. Give them a little more smoke. Like that, they don't like that. But sometimes they got these things glued down so good that inevitably it makes a crack. So these ladies have gone overboard and put a little extra honeycomb here in the top for us. And that's what they'll do. Any available space that's bigger than three eighths of an inch as Reverend Langstroth discovered, they will fill it with comb. Beekeepers call that burr comb. And sometimes we scrape it out, but I've heard recently there's really no point to doing that because they're just gonna put it right back. So we're gonna take a peek and see if we are gonna harvest some honey from this honey super. And yep, these ladies have gone to town. It appears to be filled with honey from one side to the other. So that's going to be a lot of honey to get out of there. It's probably about 50 pounds ish. So I've taken a few of the frames out individually to lighten the load a bit and the inspector is going to come by and look and see whether we need to put the bee escape on What about that mess?
Yeah, this is just a big mess. So for this box, we didn't end up having to use the B escape. We replaced it with another box, or B, and an empty box with, or a box with empty frames, drawn out frames. And we're just taking the frames from the Honey Super and we're removing the bees as gently as possible. As you can see, not a lot of bees left on this frame. There wasn't a lot of bees left in the Honey Super. And that might have been possibly partly because they had built comb down in between the two boxes on the queen excluder, which uh, constricted the flow of bees from the brood chamber up to the honey supers. So you just put this box on as a filler. Don't expect them really to fill it with honey this late in the season. Um, we're gonna treat these hives here in uh, a week or so with uh, a mite treatment, and uh, we'll make a video on that as well. wandering around looking for the inner cover and it's right here in front of me. I'll put those on, put the inner cover on at an angle like this and then just twist it. That way you're less likely to roll any bees. We started kind of late, so this is the only hive we're going to get to tonight. What happens is at this late stage uh, in the day, all the forager bees have returned to the hive. And so the hive is packed with bees for the most part. So I lied, we decided to look in one more hive and this particular honey super is packed with bees. So we are gonna add the bee escape to this particular hive. I found that just a little bit of smoke is better than a lot of smoke. And these bees, unlike the hive on that very end down there, are rather docile. That end hive, we call them the mean girls because they are vicious for some reason. Genetics, I'm sure. And it is that time of year where the hives are all a bit more defensive. The resources are a little less than what they were in the spring and early summer. We just go ahead and remove that queen excluder. And we grab the homemade bee escape, a triangle funnel with the hole in the top. And we're just gonna put that right in between and same kind of thing, put it on at an angle, just like you do your inner cover and Twist it to line it up. Less likely to roll any bees doing that. So we're gonna take the honey super. It's gonna take two of us old people to put it back on because it is extremely heavy. And there you have it. We're gonna leave that on there for a couple of days. No more than two days, probably till Sunday, today's Friday. And uh, come back and hopefully most of the bees will have vacated the premises. Put our inner cover back on. Some people say, don't bother. The bees are gonna figure out how to get back in because there is a vent hole here at the front. Um, but not very many are going to come back in through that. And we'll put the cover on in such a way that pretty much blocks it anyways. So we'll put the cover on. If 
you slide it all the way to the back, that'll block that hole. All right, day two of the great honey heist. There's the hives in the back. You're gonna see if the bee escape eliminated some of the bees of the super and possibly just try to steal some frames from the other hives without using the bee escape. Wish us luck. Okay, we're gonna check this guy, this hive. When we put the bee escape on the other day, I've already Propolize the cover back on, along with the inner cover. And it looks pretty much like most of the bees have gone. So we're going to attempt to remove this entire box. Need the handy dandy hive tool. Hopefully it's not propolized to the bee escape. Sounds like it is a little bit. Couple of bees coming on up to see what's going on. Yeehaw! And we're gonna remove the bee escape and replace it with a honey super that is full of Honey frames that we just, extract, just extracted up in the house. This is called the queen excluder. Has some little slots in it that are big enough for the worker bees and the drones, I suppose, to get through, but not the queen. So she doesn't go up into this box and start laying eggs. And we got a honey super. Again, I don't expect them to fill this with honey between now and the fall. The main objective is to have them clean up some of these frames in here. You want to get the frames in the center of the box. Remember that B space. I will put a link in the description if I remember the information on Reverend Langstroff and his work with the bees in the early days of the United States. And Langstroff design is the predominant design in North America. And the bees like their propolis. Brute force. Got a few earwigs. Patty's just flicking them out. Give them a few puffs of smoke at the entrance. I saw. Couple bees going in with some pollen. So there are still resources. Goldenrod is in bloom. Give them a little bit of smoke, not a lot, because seems to be too much is too much and they don't like it. Between the bees' diligence to seal everything up in the heat, that propolis works very good. <coughs> tip go ahead and put your smoker upwind of you so you're not choking on the smoke I definitely want to take these two frames out because they don't have anything I'd like to get that 
So I'm not sure if you all heard that, but we're going to take out some empty frames here and replace them with some frames that we just extracted honey from. And most of these frames are just drawn out. There's some capped honey in the middle here, not a lot. So we'll check with the missus to see whether she wants to take any of this or not. I leave that one. Yeah. yeah, the propolis is always fun. And then, of course, with the queen excluder, sometimes it makes a little bigger gap in between the boxes, bigger than the, the three-eighths bee space. And the bees tend to try to build comb in there. And when they do that, that acts as a glue as well. Where would you like to set this? Um, probably. So the missus is suggesting a drawn out frame for this one that's not drawn out. So we're going to go ahead and do that for sure. He's also concerned about the presence of a queen. So we're going to see if we can see the queen or some signs of a, of a queen in here. Hive has an unusual odor to it. I'm just hanging up here. Yeah. Again, these bees are relatively docile, which is good, especially for this time of year. Taking that end frame out also is a good idea. It helps you to have a little more room to maneuver to pull other frames out to inspect them. This particular frame has honey, capped honey on this side, and this other side is mostly uncapped or not even, not even got a honey in it. What we're looking for with signs of the queen is some brood, capped brood, uncapped brood, larva, eggs. This frame appears to be mostly nectar and some pollen. Keen eye of the missus says there might be some brood in this frame. And the bees are docile at the moment, but the longer you're in a hive, the more agitated they become. As you can imagine, if someone took the roof off of your house and started rearranging the furniture and looking at what you had. Yeah, that is still a, a decent brood pattern. This is the red dot queen, correct? So this is one of our original overwinter, overwintered queens. She is the mother of at least one of these hives. So this particular, this particular frame looks like they're backfilling with pollen and nectar. There is some, there is some capped brood on there, but no fresh eggs. 
from that particular one. Now I always try to put the frames back the way I found them as far as orientation and where they're at in the hive. I was told that makes a difference. So kind of makes sense. This is one of those plastic frames that we received when we purchased a nuke. A very good brood pattern, but again, no fresh eggs or fresh larva. And there is a queen cup. Bees do that um, sometimes just practicing, sometimes in preparation for swarming. Pardon? Nope. So you can kind of see the bees are getting a little bit agitated that we've been in here so long. Not too awfully bad. It's an overcast day. It's humid, probably right around 77 degrees. So this frame actually has some, some larva in it, so that's a good sign. That's a sign that the queen has been active um, in the last week or so. I'm not sure if that shows up on camera or not, but that's what that is. That's a good indication to me that you really don't need to go any further in this hive. And the missus, she concurs. We're going to go ahead and put this back together pretty much the way we found it with the exception of giving them a drawn out frame. And uh, as I said earlier, they're starting to get a little agitated, not too awfully bad, but uh, they are attempting to sting me through the gloves. And uh, that is very possible. I've been stung through these leather gloves all the way through to the, through the latex gloves underneath. So, I'm not fixing to get stung today. I got stung last week mowing the lawn. I made the mistake of running the lawnmower right in front of the hive, which is uh, never a good idea to go right in front of the hive because that's their direction of travel for the most part. Got them riled up, and the bee got tangled between my little bit of hair that I do have and my headphones. And as I was trying to convince her to leave, uh, she decided to sting me in the back of the neck. And that was one of the most severe stings that I've had because I'm still feeling the effects of it. I still have a little bit of a headache. I don't know, it could be sinuses, but it seems like the entire time, uh, it seems like it's just been after effect of the sting. Could be my imagination though. But we're gonna go ahead and put this one back together. I'm gonna give them a little bit of a little bit of smoke just so they'll go down in the hive so I don't crush any bees when I put it back together. Not sure if you can hear that, but they're definitely getting a little agitated with me. Their sound of their buzzing, the pitch has changed a little bit. So I've got the message loud and clear. We're gonna go ahead and uh, put a few more frames back in this one and close it up. Okay, so we're moving on to the 
next and final hive we're probably going to leave the mean girls alone for today but the sun is coming out so they might not be as agitated now that it's not overcast um, but we'll see we're gonna see how it goes with this one see if we can swipe some honey from these gals and uh, we'll go from there Once again, these bees seem relatively calm. Hate to keep using the word docile. But, uh, that seems like the right word. And that was a entrance reducer and I had been using those to prop these outer covers up just to get a little more ventilation to help the bees keep the hive cool um, on these warmer days. They regulate the temperature of the hive, keep it a constant temperature. I don't want to quote that temperature to you because I don't know at this particular moment what it is but they are very good at homeostasis, keeping this hive a constant temperature for uh, optimal conditions for raising brood, raising other bees. Well, these frames look nice. They're brand new frames this year. They won't stay looking like that for long. That frame is not completely filled and capped, so we're going to just leave that one for now. We're just going to see if we can take a few frames out without having to use the bee escape and coming back in a day or so. Frame's pretty heavy, so it's probably going to be a nice frame of honey, and it is very nice. Nice color. Not sure if you can see that in the video, but I have my frame hanger that typically put on the side of a box. I just have it right back here on our, our fence that we've put up to keep unwanted visitors out. Mainly bears, but honestly, I don't think that's gonna stop a bear. Thank goodness, I haven't had to worry about that yet, even though there have been bear sightings around and several bird feeders destroyed. I'm going to let the missus decide on this one whether we're going to leave it or take it. The reason I was asking her, it's not completely drawn out there at the bottom. Um, and then, of course, these foundations are rude foundations. Um, but use what you got. Did you want that? Or do you want me to leave it? So you see how they're flying out at my face now? That's because they're not real happy with what I'm doing. much easier to use this like a lever on one frame to the other kind of awkward the way I'm doing it though that's another nice one looks like they're all pretty much ready in this uh, super Except for the end one, correct. Yeah, there's looks like maybe the two on this other end aren't ready either.
why don't you just set them in there for now and then we'll get some frames and we'll brush them down into here how's that Yeah, another very, very nice looking frame of honey. And possibly the last three we're going to leave because this particular one doesn't look completely drawn out anyway. They're going to need, we're going to leave some for them for the winter. So if you made it this far in the video, you could comment below if you're a current beekeeper or past beekeeper, or maybe somebody that's just interested in learning beekeeping. So, what do you think? All right, the missus has spoken. We're going to take this one. And it's possible these frames are drawn out in such a inconsistent way. I've heard different things about different bees and their preference or disdain for plastic foundation. And uh, sometimes they don't draw out plastic foundation as, some, as well as others. Um, but I'm by no means an expert, so I'm not exactly sure but it does kind of stand to reason that there's some corners, not the whole frame, but like the corner of that frame, it's not drawn out. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and give them some of the wet frames that, of the honey that we just extracted. And that's a fun process, it's a lot of work. And uh, I think you get a better appreciation for the honey, um, being a beekeeper obviously, and also um, believe it or not, we've been doing this for four years and today was the first day I had the privilege of operating the honey extractor. We have a two frame manual extractor and, uh, our formula is, uh, six minutes per side of each frame. So that's 12 minutes for two frames of honey to be spun. Uh, in addition to the time it takes to uncap it. So probably looking at a good 20 minutes, so 10 minutes per frame to extract the honey. Probably extremely slow by commercial standards, but it's what we have, it's what we could afford, and what we're doing. While I'm putting this back together, I just want to mention I do appreciate those of you who watch the videos and share the videos and comment. Um, at this point, I read every comment and I try to respond to each one and I appreciate your input. Oh, see, it's a good thing I have my wife here of 37 years to remind me that we have other tasks to do before I get ahead of myself and start putting things back together. So we have to brush the bees down into the hive as best we can as I begin to sweat quite a bit. And once again, if you've watched other videos, you've heard me talk about these bee smocks that we wear. Um, some beekeepers wear you know, the big padded suits, big padded smocks, and that's, you know, good for them. This is what we initially bought, again, because we were on a budget, and uh, do not, have not in four seasons, uh, haven't been stung through this smock. Like I've said in other videos, I've been stung through my gloves, stung through my blue jeans. Um, but maybe we've been fortunate to have bees that aren't as aggressive as some other bees. I 
I'm going to take the brush. I will tell you this, that it's really nice having a partner in the, the bee yard and obviously in the extracting process. Um, I'm sure beekeeping, I'm sure many people do it on their own, but it is, it's really nice to have a helper. So, again, not sure if you can see that in there, but quite a few bees left in this honey super, so I'm going to brush them down in. And the missus, once again, having a partner is great. Reminded me that there was a frame out of sight, out of mind behind me. And bees are getting a little more riled up. I just rolled the bee. So good thing we're almost done with this hive. No matter how hard you try getting the bees off of these, there's always, there's always one that wants to hang around till the end, that wants to defend, wants to defend their hive, which is uh, what nature intended. That's a whole nother subject. The complexity of the creatures that we share this planet with. Me, the more I learn about bees, the less I know about other things and uh, just the more in awe I am of them. So wish us luck. We're going to go ahead and at least take a peek inside this hive. Call it the Mean Girls Hive. I know there's probably some people out there that are going to be upset with that term because they're just doing what they do. They're bees. They're going to defend their own. But this hive is very aggressive, very aggressive. So yeah, just telling the wife, just being myself. So hopefully that's good with everybody. Kind of like uh, Les Claypool, for those of you that know who he is. He wanted to be Eddie Van Halen, but there was already an Eddie Van Halen, so... He decided to be the Eddie Van Halen of bass guitar and probably one of the best bass guitar players as far as improvisation goes, I'm going to say, out there. But yeah, I'm going to be myself because uh, somebody else has already came in Reynolds. Yeah. Kind of a tall hive too, right? It was overflowing with bees earlier this summer and still pretty much the same. So not sure what's going on up here. So kind of a weird scene. Bring you guys in close and let you look at it. This hive is taller than my tripod will even go. Oh, we're just doing some cinema verte here. They seem a little more docile than they have in the past. They're preoccupied with not sure exactly what. So I'm going to check with the missus and see if she wants to go any further. And she's saying yes, let's do this. Even though she's got somebody attacking her face. <laughs> what do you think that is? Is 
It's like some kind of super propolis. Really, what is that? That is just bizarre. That propolis? Yeah, it's just bizarre. Maybe I should call you Mrs. T, like South Main Auto it says Mrs. O. <laughs> Still. Still a bunch, 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 bunch of bees in this hive. Not as aggressive as they were the last time we looked in here. Yes, it is too tall to... I'm almost thinking we should take some of these honey frames, but... I don't know how. A lot of them seem to be moving in slow motion. Oh, there is. How many of you out there remember the old, uh, you get it on tape, you might get it in cash tagline. Just all kinds of bees doing weird stuff. They're doing bee, bee stuff. I call it weird stuff, but it's bee stuff. Probably could have moved this over. But woulda, coulda, shoulda. Yeah, this, there's a lot of bees in there. A lot of bees. Kind of an odd feeling having my face literally right here with a bunch of bees. And they just changed their tone a little bit. I wonder how many out front now. I think that's where the sound's coming from. I don't feel comfortable putting another box on this hive. Okay. Whoa. Hers is all crooked. All right. Well, thanks for joining us. And hopefully you enjoyed the video. And if you did, like, share, and comment. And as you can see, the aggressive hive is still kind of aggressive. They're just like uh, flying around our faces. But I think they'll get over it. Thanks.